Hey, this is Terratoots with a quick tutorial on creating snow in Terragen 4. In previous tutorials, we've learned how to create large-scale snow for mountains and landscapes. In this tutorial, we'll go more in-depth into creating realistic snow cover for foreground renders. Like most things in Terragen, we'll build this up in layers. We'll add large displacements, medium displacements, and small displacements, then throw on some shine and sparkle for good measure. We'll start out in a scene I've prepared here with an imported terrain feature from Gaia, which we're going to add some snow to. First, let's add a new surface layer. which I'll call snow. And we'll set the color to a subtle bluish white. We'll also give it a 40-20 maximum slope constraint. And we'll set the layer smoothing effect to one. This will make the snow stay off steeper terrain and smooth out the terrain it covers. Next, we'll add some large displacement. The goal for this layer of displacement is to give our snow surface a nice gentle roll like it's drifted onto the underlying terrain. We'll do this with a power fractal attached as a child layer to the surface layer. Let's set the feature scale to 5 and the lead-in to 10. Turn off the color and in displacement, let's set the amplitude to 0.5, the roughness of 0, and a spike limit of 0.05. In the Tweak Noise tab, set the noise flavor to Perlin Billows, and set the goalie smoothing to 1. This should give us some low, soft waves. We'll also set the displacement offset to 0.25, which will add a little bulk to our snow. For the next step, we'll add some medium scale displacement to make the snow a little bit patchy and give it some variety. We're actually going to do this by masking our snow layer with another fractal. And I found that the cloud fractal shader gives some nice shapes here, though others would certainly work as well. Let's set the feature scale to two, lead into five, and the smallest scale to 0.5. In the density tab, bring the contrast up to 1.2, the coverage adjust up to 1.1, and the roughness will leave at 1.5. The goal here is to create some somewhat isolated spots where the ground shows through the snow a bit. We can hit the random seed button a few times until they fall in some nice places. Next, we'll add some small scale displacement to give some texture to the surface of the snow. If you look closely at snow, even though it can seem very smooth from far away, on close inspection there's often a rough pattern. We can achieve this by adding a second power fractal as a child to our surface layer. After the first one we added for larger displacements. We'll call this large displacements and small. We'll set this one to a very small size. 0 0.005, 0 0.01, 0 0.005 and a very small displacement of 0.001 with a roughness of 0.3 and a spike limit of 0.3. We'll also change the noise flavor here to Perlin Billows and set the noise variation to 2, giving us a few larger clumps of snow here and there. Next we're going to add a subtle shine to the surface of our snow. We'll do this by adding a new surface layer, which we'll call Shine. We'll disable the color, and we'll use this to hold a reflective shader as a child node. Now we'll bring the reflectivity down to 0.3, the highlight intensity to 0.9, and we'll bring the specular roughness way up to 0.5. This will make the reflected light less intense and spread it pretty far out over the surface rather than just giving a single shiny spot. That being said, along with a general shine, I'd also like the snow to have some sparkle where the sun hits it. For this, we'll add another surface layer, which we'll call sparkle, turn off the color, and use this to hold a second ref also as a child layer. We'll leave this one at the default setting so it'll be more shiny. 
Next we're going to mask it so that there are just tiny bits of reflection spaced out over the surface. An easy trick to do this is to use a fake stone shader as the mask. We'll set the stone scale to very small and the density very low, which will give us the scattered effect that we're after. Finally, we want the sparkles to fade out into the distance, so we'll use a distance shader to mask the fake stone shader. We'll assign this to the render camera, then swap the black and white colors, set the near distance to 50, and the far distance to 100. This means our sparkly snow will start fading out after 50 meters and be completely gone after 100 meters. And there we have it. Now obviously there are a lot of different types of snow and different techniques that can be used to create them. This is just one of them, but hopefully it will get you started creating some frosty winter scenes.